All right, hey VC, how you doing? My name is Jamie, and welcome back once again. We've got, of course, more vinyl to take a look at. Uh, the, the weather this week, I tell you, it has been, it just feels like it's never going to end. We've had ice pellets, freezing rain, lots of snow. It just feels like, I don't know, Wyerton Willie, that's the groundhog uh, for this area, for Ontario, had called for an early spring, so we're still going to hold him to it, but it sure doesn't feel that way, but <laughs> fingers crossed. Okay, let's take a look at some vinyl. I'll send this one out to a Blues Guy vinyl off the top. I think you'd uh, really quite like this. Uh, this is Tony Joe White, a uh, southern artist, and this is his uh, debut, his uh, album from 1969, Black and White, on uh, the Monument label. Uh, the Monument label, that was uh, Roy Orbison's uh, early label. Uh, this is really nice southern blues rock. Uh, Tony Joe White had the hit Pokes Salad Annie, and it was Elvis Presley who did a cover of Poke Salad Annie about a year later uh, for the album on stage or for his concerts. And Elvis's um, rendition of it is almost note for note with uh, Tony Joe White. Uh, this is a great album overall. Side One is absolutely solid. It's got a great kind of southern rock kind of thing going on. Side Two is okay. It's less successful. Uh, first track, his cover of Who's Making Love uh, is not too bad, but then Little Green Apples could kind of do with that. Wichita Lineman isn't a great cover, and The Look of Love, I don't know why that would have been included. Again, when you had such a solid Side One of great bluesy stuff, but you never know with record companies, always trying to go for the hits and maybe encouraging them to do covers and things like that but this is really a great album well worth checking out from 1969 and I paid less than 8 bucks for it so it wasn't too too bad and uh, yeah and still somewhat in the shrink here and uh, yeah on the monument label alright there you go Okay, a little bit of a Canadian content for you. Uh, Nash the Slash American Bandages. Was happy to pick this up. Now, you know I'm a Nash the Slash fan, also a fan of the band FM, uh, that he was a band member of. Uh, this is uh, Nash doing nothing but covers on this one. Uh, essentially, uh, yeah, all pretty much all American covers with the exception of one track. Um, increasingly with uh, Nash the Slash in his solo career, he was uh, increasingly doing cover songs on a lot of his albums like Dead Man's Curve and 19th Nervous Breakdown, that sort of thing. So it was inevitable that by his about 34th album that he would probably do an, a, a, an album full of covers and uh, hence American Bandages. I've always really enjoyed this cover. When they reissued this on CD, they did it with a different cover that I didn't really care for. I really, really prefer that cover. Uh, here you can see all the covers that he does. Uh, again, generally all American covers with the exception of Steppenwolf's Born to be Wild. And, uh, yeah, and he does them, of course, in the Nash the Slash style, that sort of full-on attack. And there you go, and this was on uh, Quality Records. And then, but uh, stylized, and this came out in 1984. Yeah, pretty much all American covers are on here. So, oh yeah, there you go. Okay, Super Tramps, Crime of the Century. You know, what can you say? This is such a classic album, and I was able to get this for a super cheap price, and it does not include the inner sleeve. I do recall this having an uh, uh, inner sleeve with the lyrics, but it does include the A&M record sleeve. It's in a little bit rough shape there, but uh, plays well. And uh, just a great album overall, especially with Roger Hodgson, and uh, boy, with uh, Roger Hodgson and uh, Richard Davies, or Rick Davies. Yeah, it's always a shame Roger Hodgson was never able to get back in with Super Tramp. Okay, we've got Ronnie Hawkins, The Hawk, and his album Mr. Dynamo, uh, featuring Levon Helms on drums and a track called Hey Bubaloo that was written by a very young Robbie Robertson, who would later, of course, uh, join the band. Uh, Ronnie Hawkins, kind of the granddaddy, the grandfather of Canadian rock and roll. Uh, so many Canadian musicians went through his uh, tutelage, uh, if you will, including the band, uh, bands like Crowbar, so many acts, even David Foster worked with uh, Ronnie Hawkins in the early days. So many bands. Ronnie, Elaine, and the Disciples, to name just a few. But, uh, yeah, this is, you know, Rockabilly, Rock and Roll, uh, 1959. Uh, the album's not in terrific shape um, on Roulette, but still okay. Okay, Ronnie Hawkins, The Hawk. 
Uh, some early Gray Slick. This is uh, Gray Slick and the Great Society. This was her band uh, before she joined up with uh, Jefferson Airplane. And this is the reissue. These, uh, this is a double album, and uh, it was initially released as uh, two single albums. The initial titles were Conspicuous Only in Its Absence, and Volume 2 was How It Was. But it's uh, very noted, especially on Volume 1, uh, to have early pre- uh, Jefferson Airplane renditions of Somebody to Love and also White Rabbit. And uh, this is great San Francisco psychedelic rock. Uh, well worth picking up if you like Grace Slick and, uh, yeah, certainly uh, The Great Society. So this was the reissue where they made it a double album. They just put the two volumes together. I'll take it out and give, give you a quick look there. Lots of text, so lots of essay stuff. And this was on Columbia. And there you go. Okay, some classic rock. We got Bob Seger's Stranger in Town. Just a great album. So many hits. I mean, side one alone, when you got Hollywood Nights, still the same. Old time rock and roll. Feels like a number. Solid Bob Seger overall. And certainly remember when this album came out, how huge it was. Such a huge album at the time. And uh, pleased to see with this uh, that the inner sleeve uh, is included. And it plays very nicely, and I uh, do love the stylized label. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Man. And was very pleased to see that I had I'd forgotten about it, but it did include an, an, a, a picture insert as well. So, Stranger in Town. And that. Yeah, it's funny how you forget about some of the inserts uh, that were included in albums over the years and whatnot. Not just the, uh, not just the inner sleeve. Okay, Quicksilver. Uh, this is What About Me. You know, pretty much all the Quicksilver albums are great. Uh, you know, they have such a unique sound almost with every album. Love that gatefold. Yeah, and this is by the time they were pretty much just going with Quicksilver. They weren't the Quicksilver messenger service or anything like that. And on an early capital pressing. And, uh, yeah, just I love Quicksilver. Can't get enough of that band. Okay, Edgar Winter Group. The classic album, They Only Come Out at Night. And, of course, it contains the big hits uh, Frankenstein and Free Ride, which sound great every single time you listen to them. Just absolutely wonderful. But what a great album from start to finish. It's a nice variety of music. It gets rocking. There's almost kind of like country-inspired stuff and a kind of slightly bluesy stuff. A really good album overall. And, of course, the uh, great trivia is that uh, features vocalist Dan Hartman on this album. And Dan Hartman would later go on to have his own hits like uh, Instant Replay and I Can Dream About You. Uh, really kind of pop stuff. But uh, people forget, yeah, he was rocking with the Edgar Winter Group. And then this album produced by Rick Derringer, who also does play on here as well. He also does a slide guitar and pedal steel. And very nice, and it opens from the inside. And very happy to see that it was on an early uh, epic, uh, the, the classic yellow label, which you don't often see. Oops. And there you go. Okay, The Who, It's Hard, uh, their last album before their sort of long breakup, uh, still with Kenny Jones, uh, part of the band, and of course John Entwistle, Pete Townsend, and Roger Daltrey. Uh, sort of revisiting this album, uh, this isn't a great album. Um, I do like it better than Endless Wire, but it's and I, it's something about Athena. That song is okay, but it's not a strong song to kick off the album, and I think that kind of sets the tone. I really like Eminence Front. I think that's a great song. Probably would have been a better song to kick off the album with. The thing is that that's a Pete Townsend vocal on that one, so for a Who album, they wouldn't likely kick it off with a Pete Townsend vocal. Correct me if I'm wrong, but overall, the album just doesn't really... This doesn't really happen, you know? But uh, it's nice to see it comes with the uh, inner sleeve. Very sort of straightforward uh, inner sleeve, just the lyrics there. And uh, on where it's hard.
And The Who, uh, back in the studio, and uh, Pete Townsend has been releasing vlogs on the uh, new album that they're working on. Of course, uh, they haven't had Roger Daltrey in the studio as of yet, but uh, looking forward to it. Hopefully it's going to be good. And time for one more, a little bit more classic rock, Eddie Money uh, and his classic album. This is the one with the big hits, Two Tickets to Paradise and Baby Hold On. Just love that stylized cover there. You know, great radio-friendly stuff on Course Columbia. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, stay warm wherever you are, and we'll certainly chat again. And if you can, hit uh, like and that bell notification thing, and uh, hit subscribe, and uh, certainly leave a comment, and we'll chat again really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.